friends, welcome to our channel. This is Pallavi Pada. So in today's video, we'll be talking about ML pipeline. So I'll be walking through all that that is necessary to implement the ML pipeline. Let's dive in. So before we begin the ML pipeline, let's have a look at the conventional method. So what is a machine learning workflow? If you see this, it is all sequential in nature. Like first we have our data acquisition followed by EDA and then the pre-processing, model selection, model training, hyperparameter tuning, and finally deployment. So the uh, output of one process is fed as an input for the very next or the subsequent uh, process. So this is a traditional ML workflow. We can improvise this rather than having a, uh, like taking the output from one process and passing it to the next one. We can do an encapsulation or we can club the several process together. This is nothing but the pipeline. So what is pipeline? It's a way of organizing a series of operations or functions that process some data. So if it's a diagram here, we have an encapsulation for the pre processing and the modeling. So it takes the input and the output is a prediction. Before we implement the pipeline, we need to implement column transformer. So what is column transformer? This will take care of all the pre-processing part. It is a utility provided by sklearn. It is similar to that of pipeline, but it is designed to apply different transformation technique to different columns of the data set. Say we want to do the pre-processing. Uh, there are some missing data. We want to do the imputation. Uh, we want to standard and numerical data and also convert the categorical into numeric. So all these things can be done in the form of pipeline by using a column transformer. So this column transformer will create an object which is again passed to the pipeline. So you can see the diagram here. We have a column transformer and finally it is passed along with the model in the pipeline. Let's have a look at the code. So there are two sets of code. First one is without using the pipeline. Other one is by using the pipeline. So let's try to compare these two and appreciate the usage of the pipeline. So here I have a code without using the pipeline. So I'm going to import all the required libraries and I'm going to use a data set which is a categorical or classification problem. So there are uh, various parameters which will indicate whether a person has got liver disease. So the target variable is a stage. So it will say uh, different stages of the liver. If you see the data type of the data frame, it has got both integer, float or the numeric and the categorical. Now let us create the X and Y uh, data. Now let us separate the target variable from the features. I'm going to do the train and test split. Now I'm going to segregate the categorical and numerical columns. Next, let's begin with the pre-processing uh, step. So first it is a standardizing uh, numerical column and categorical encoding. And finally, I'm going to club these two into a single data frame. So I'll say these are step one, step two and step three for the pre-processing of the training data. I have min max scalar, one more encoding and concatenation. I got a data frame. Now I'm going to repeat all the three steps, the pre-processing for the test uh, data. Next, I'm going to run the model. So here I'm going to choose a random uh, forest classifier with the hyperparameter tuning. So these are the parameters I'm going to use and grid search will be used. Next, I'm going to predict it for the test data and I'll be calculating the accuracy score. It will take time since we have lot many parameters here and it's a random forest. So you can see here, it is all done in the sequential order. I have read the data and then I performed the uh, pre-processing and then the next step was a model selection, hyperparameter tuning. So each data or the each output is passed as an input for the very next steps. Now let us use a pipeline for the same data set. Till here the code remains the same. Next, for the pre-processing, I'm going to use a column transformer and then passing the one hot encoder and min-max scalar. So uh, objects get created. Next, I'm using the same object and passing it to the pipeline. Once again, I'm going to use a hyperparameter tuning by using several parameters. There's one difference in the parameters. If you see here, the pipeline can have many functions. So the parameter can be for the any functions for any of these functions. So how do I identify which parameter has go has to go for which function? So that is where we use a prefix. So we give a name for each function and we need to add this as a prefix followed by the underscore underscore for the parameters we are using. Next, inside the grid search, I'm going to call the pipeline and pass the parameter. And finally using this object, I'm going to predict the data for the X test. If you compare the steps, 
it's quite simple. We have reduced a lot of uh, steps here. A lot of in, uh, intermediate steps are being removed by using the pipeline. It's very easy to implement. So here we have only two steps, whereas in the traditional one, we have four steps, four or five steps. This is very easy. This first step is for the pre-processing using the column transformer, and the second one is using the uh, pipeline. Let us see what is the advantage of a pipeline. Streamline workflow. We have already observed it. In the previous code, we have five steps, and here it is very uh, streamlined in a very good manner. We it is reduced to only two steps. Code simplicity. There's not much intermediate variables used. We're just passing the input to the uh, pipeline and we get the prediction. So code has become quite simple here. Prevent data leakage. Since there's not much of uh, intermediate variable, the, uh, there's less room for errors. And it also gives a provision for doing parameter grid search or randomized search and code reusability. In the sense, we get an object of the pipeline. So by using this object, we can use it for any other data frame. Say for instance, I'm going to import another data frame. I have nothing to do. Just use this object and pass the input. That's all. So it is quite easy. So I would request you all to enhance your code by using the pipeline. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, like and share this. See you all in the next video. Thank you.